Life's too short to drive boring cars. If you've been looking for a reliable Japanese luxury vehicle, you've probably looked at Acura, Lexus, and Infiniti. And while they're all built on the same side of the pond, believe it or not, they're not all built the same in terms of reliability. They all have some very unique philosophies that allow them to be more or less reliable. Well, today I'm gonna to share with you the conversation between Lexus and Infiniti, which one's more reliable, and I'm actually gonna provide some numbers to back that up. Let's get into it now. So before we get into the actual hard numbers and data and talk about specifically which one is more reliable, I want to show you some examples from both brands and discuss some of the issues that you're going to find with that particular brand. Now as you all know, Lexus is essentially upscale Toyota and Toyota has been putting out quality vehicles for many, many years. It's all in the philosophy, it's their attitude about perfection, quality control and the pride of what they build. Whereas Infiniti on the other hand is a build out from Nissan and Nissan has built some great vehicles. As a matter of fact, years ago I had a Nissan Datsun 280ZX, beautiful vehicle. It was also bulletproof, you couldn't break it. The only issue was rust. And then the little Datsun B210 also evolved into the Nissan and those were just rugged little workhorses. Not heavy duty, but they ran forever. But then Toyota's had the Camry and the Corolla. The name is older than most generational buildings in Europe. So there's definitely arguments for both brands, but things have changed over the years. Toyota has kept down the path of consistency. They haven't made drastic changes. They've stuck with a good old automatic transmission. Most of their engines have been consistent throughout the years. For example, one of their latest staples is the three and a half liter V6, absolutely unstoppable. In most states of tune, it's around 311 horsepower. Realistically, they're bulletproof. And Nissan Infiniti also have a three and a half liter and 3.7 liter V6, which is also the staple in the particular lineup. But Nissan's gone and done something a little different. A lot of their late model vehicles now are using the continuously variable transmission or CVT and while Toyota consistently builds on what they know and use the automatic transmission seldom do you have actual failures with that but trust me when I say Nissan and Infiniti have no shortage of problems with the Jatco transmission or the CVTs they're truly the center of attention when it comes to conversations around recalls and failure points with a lot of these cars. So let's start with one example, and it's, we'll start with the Lexus, and we're talking about the IS250 right here. Now this isn't really one of their best cars of all time. I mean, it has the style, and Lexus is quite reliable. Reliability isn't so much the issue here, but it's this 2.5 liter V6 under the hood here that only makes 204 horsepower. Look at the great headlights though. And the front grille, definitely consistent with the brand. Of course, you got sunroof, and you've got those wonderful gunmetal gray wheels. Look at this great mirror, awesome little light, great little Toyota style handles front and back. And you'll notice you've got these distinctive tail lights that you're finding on the Lexus. Here we are with the all wheel drive IS250. This one isn't necessarily the best engine that they've ever used in their IS series. Many people have commented about the gutless drivetrain with 200 horsepower doesn't sound like it's lacking, but in practice it doesn't work all that well. The six speed automatic transmission and that drivetrain, it just doesn't have the get up and go. And as well there's carbon fouling, which is a big problem with this particular engine. But the IS comes in a couple of other different configurations, such as Right here we have the IS300, turbo four cylinder engine, more of a modern day design. These cars are great, ultra reliable, frugal, not the highest performance cars, but they do just fine. And there's one more. Right there, IS350, and it's the F Sport right there. And you've got great little dual exhaust tips. This car is ultra clean. And look at the wonderful sides of this vehicle all the way down here. And the interior is absolutely beautiful in these cars. Top shelf finishing for sure and even a small sunroof to boot. Now this one here has the three and a half liter V6, makes 311 horsepower, and you also get the eight speed auto in this particular car. So what are the issues? Well, with some cases you get squeaky noise in the back, rear brakes, P0300 series of engine codes on the check engine light side of things, GPS and radio related issues, as well as a rear view mirror discoloring. But the reality is it's mostly nickel and dime things with the IS series. Rarely do you have a catastrophic engine problem or a catastrophic transmission issue. These vehicles are relatively bulletproof. And then right here, we're looking at an Infiniti Q50S. Right there, very interesting front grille on there. How about the LED headlights and the wonderful strong chin on these vehicles? How about those wonderful wheels on the 3.0T? Great LED marker lights and a standard small sunroof, almost like on the Lexus. These are a nicer touch, front and back. And I definitely like the looks of this chrome around the windows. The back end definitely looks sharp and spanky with the LED lights and it's the Q50S. And it happens to be all wheel drive as well. What about the back? Yeah, you've got dual exhaust tips. How about the interior? 
I would say certainly the Infiniti has a slightly dressier looking upscale interior than you're finding in most Lexus vehicles. So what kind of issues do you have with these? Well, if you can believe it, there's a few problems. In rare occasions, engine seizure, tires wear out too fast, brakes wear out too fast, brake master cylinder issue. So basically a moderate level of dependability in this particular car. Now, before I show you another couple of examples, I want to mention that some reliable vehicles that are highly recommended would be the Lexus GS, which is top of the list. The ES is ultra reliable and relatively cost effective and the IS which I showed you has a marginal number of failures and quite reliable. On the Infiniti side a couple of more reliable vehicles are the Q50, Q60, the QX4 and the M35 if you can believe it. Now one thing I have to mention, we have an Infiniti QX60 behind us here. Now it's a moderate level of reliability, but as I said before, the CVT transmission is a common problem. But did you know in 2022, this vehicle is getting upgraded to a nine speed ZF automatic transmission. And at that point, all the CVT transmission issues out the window. I mean, these are a great looking vehicle. Love the new design of the headlights and this great looking grill consistent with all the other Infinities. How about that grill? And of course, along the side, it looks very mean. I love this bulbous looking rear flare. It makes it look strong and staunch. And down here, you'll notice the overhang on the back. Definitely looks very strong. Love this high quality look up here. Definitely some nice finishing. And a set of classy looking luggage racks up there. How about this wonderful new finishing? I really have to say that I love the way this wraps around. You get that black finishing that goes all the way around. Looks like nicer continuity. And these great LED tail lights are a really nice touch. And they just sort of form and blend across the back in this Infinity with all wheel drive, the QX60. But you'll notice you can tow some junk too. And you've got these great little chrome touches right there. How about those great looking wheels as well? Looks laser cut. And it's two tone handles back and front with keyless entry. And the interior is absolutely gorgeous with Q-stitch, brushed aluminum, and some very high quality touches. This certainly is one of the most beautiful Infinities right now on the market. Now the only problem was in 2014 and 16 model years, you had the timing chain rattle. Well, the, unfortunately the timing chain is what keeps your synchronization between your pistons and your valves. Lose that synchronization and you can have an internal collision and a catastrophic engine failure. You must listen to the rattling noise on the earlier models of the QX60. And a lot of it has to do with timing chain ramps and other hardware associated. And then Lexus has the wonderful RX350 like we have right here. Now these are almost bulletproof. Very few things go wrong with these other than the odd check engine light and most specifically stereo related issues where firmware has to take care of that. But on top of that, let's not forget that these are actually relatively easy to break into and sadly many, many thieves already know that. But let's take a look. Love the headlights on this. Big mouth grille, not the prettiest from the front perspective, but that's a Lexus thing. And I love this black chrome down here and this gunmetal gray wheels on the F Sport model. Look at those mirrors, beautiful. Brushed aluminum luggage racks, and you've got a small sunroof to boot. And the interior is also extremely high quality. Very nice place to sit for many, many miles. And again, you have those wonderful handles, front and back, plastic cladding to protect the vehicle from the rocks off the road. And of course, you have this wonderful overhang, still resembles a Toyota in a lot of ways, but look at the LED tail lights in this Lexus RX350. Beautiful all the way around. Love the way it flows and down the side. It's a thing of beauty. And then we have a G37X right here. A little bit more sporty by Infiniti. Very attractive looking vehicle. It's all wheel drive with the X model, but sadly they're not without their issue. Hard downshifts are noted with these. Check engine lights associated with the purge valve and the canister. Brake warning light may stay illuminated even once the parking brake is released. And the engine RPM rises a few hundred even when you're trying to downshift, it seems like it's fighting the car. There's also the occasional tapping noise, strange tapping noise from the driver's side of the vehicle and a few hosts of different electrical gremlins from time to time. So which one's more reliable? Well, first of all, I would say if you're looking for a more sporting experience and something with a little more pizzazz, you're definitely gonna go with the Infinity. But if all you care about is a little bit of style, the quality, but most importantly, reliability and lower cost of running, then Lexus is your game. But here's why. Do you realize the average Infinity ranks at about three and a half out of five stars according to RepairPal, whereas Lexus is ranked across the board at about four stars out of five. In addition, RepairPal also states that the average Lexus visits the shop unexpectedly about point 
like five times in a given year, whereas the average Infiniti sees the dealership unexpectedly about 0.7 times in a given year. Not only that, the average cost per year to run these vehicles is about $652 for your average Infiniti versus the Lexus annual cost of about $551. So it costs less, it's in the shop less, and quite frankly, it ranks higher overall with the Lexus. On top of that, did you realize the average Lexus experiences a major failure only about 8% of the time, whereas the Infiniti sees it around 12% of the time. And again, as mentioned earlier, the Lexus typically uses more of a conventional automatic transmission, which is much less troublesome than your conventional CVT by Jatco that you're finding in the Infiniti and Nissan cars. And with all of that said, be sure to click on that one. If you've been shopping, you probably want to appreciate Lexus or Acura, which is the more reliable. Hope to see you real soon. Catch you then. Bye-bye.